So check this out guys, we are back on the main village inside of COC and we have got for you the return of the WWE Royal Rumble Wrestling Ring COC style. Check it out, there is a wrestling ring in front of you, the arrow is the middle, four Teslas representing the corners and then all the other buildings are spaced out around. Now what's about to happen, every single one of my clan mates is going to get one shot to take on this challenge guys, the Royal Rumble. The rule is they've got to use at least one of every single troop inside of the game. Elixir troops, dark elixir troops, the only thing they are not allowed to use is jump spells and of course earthquake spells guys. And the mission, can anyone survive inside of the ring? We're about to find out. So do me a favor guys, let me know down below in that comment section if you were to take on this challenge, which troop do you think would be the last man or woman standing? Let me know down below and one final announcement guys, if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'm going to make another feeder clan. I'm going to invite you, my subscribers, into the clan. And I'm going to let you challenge this base to see if anyone can beat it. If you want to see that, smash the like button, guys. 10,000 likes and make sure you subscribe to the channel. You've got to be subscribed in order to join the clan. So here we go. The first attack is underway. As I said, every single clan mate is going to get one chance to take on the WWE COC style troll base, guys. So let's see which troop will be the last man standing. So here we go. It appears he hasn't dropped every single troop into the core as quickly as possible, guys. Though I told my clan mates, whoever drops all troops within 20 seconds and survives the longest will win $25. So at the end of the video, I'm going to go through all the replays and I'm going to see who followed the rules, dropped all the troops by 20 seconds, including skeleton spells, and actually survived the longest. So there goes the bowler flying off the screen. It looks like the single target Inferno Towers are very slow at taking down these troops, guys. The Queen's ability is being used. She goes down, and it looks like the majority of I Love to Clash's troops have been exterminated by the WWE Royal Rumble troll base. Kind of decided to cheat at the end, guys. Drops in the skeleton spells right at the end. So many skeletons coming out of this skeleton spell. It's actually insane. Look how many are coming out. It's like endless little ants, but they're dead. They're roasted. They're toasted. And it's game over for I Love to Clash. So here we go, moving on to Numero Duo. And it is going to be Keegan Bamboza to take on the Royal Rumble WWE Troll Base next using every single troop he has in the game. Plus, he's also brought some skeleton spells, guys. So these dudes seem to think that skeleton spells are a great choice. And I think they think that they can spawn them later on. But that's not the case. I told them the rules. All troops, including spells, must be spawned within 20 seconds of the first troop going down, guys. So here we go. There go the heroes. There goes the healer. Once again, another slow deployment from Keegan. There goes the witch, finally dropping in some extra troops into the center, guys. But he still hasn't dropped down every single troop. And Keegan also, therefore, forfeits, guys. So checking out Keegan, moving around the base, trying to take out as many buildings and structures as possible. There goes the lava hound, top right, balloons follow. I'm guessing he's going to be dropping in the rest of the balloons in the CC. Here comes some dragons. And it looks like it is almost already game over for Keegan. These defenses, don't forget the majority of them, are close to max level, guys. And that means they're going to do some serious damage to the majority of the troops which are dropped down. Another Tesla Tower pops up, distracts Mr. Dragon in the center there. And he's also getting blown and annoyed by the Air Sweeper. So it's not looking great for any of these troops. Here we go. Still 1 minute and 55 seconds left in the raid if he's got anything else to do. Drops in the final troop which is a minion and he's decided to cheat once again and hold back with a skeleton spell. So Keegan, you lose, you forfeited, game over. So check this out guys, now it's going to get interesting. Roy is about to take on the base and he has every single troop maxed out currently at max level I believe apart from the new troops like the P.E.K.K.A. So check it out. He's going straight in with the healers, the heroes, and as many troops down as possible. Trying to break through that level 12 wall instantly. A try rage spell. Looks glorious. I mean, look how bright it is, guys. It is extremely bright. Sending in as many troops now as possible, literally spamming them into the core of this base. Still got a couple left alive, and he is about to also forfeit the challenge because he hasn't spawned them down as quickly as possible. But here we go. Witch is coming in. Bowler, Lava Hound, and he's still got a Barbarian and an Archer to deploy. Hasn't for some reason sent them down, but check it out guys, over on the right hand side on the bottom region of this base, it looks like Roy has done some serious damage and taken out quite a lot of these defenses. The question is, can he make it all the way to the three minute mark guys? The Eagle Artillery causing an issue of course, picking off these troops extremely rapidly. 
from all over the base, guys. Golems making their way up. I think they're about to perish. And he's still got the hero, the queen, and of course the Grand Warden alive. And the Barbarian King's now made it onto the Eagle Artillery down the bottom. And he still has the Barbarian King ability to use. So it looks like Roy has done an insane job, guys. Unfortunately, he did forfeit the challenge because he didn't spawn all troops within the 20 second period. So check it out, the Rage Barbarian King has been activated and the Double Cannon gets exterminated in less than a second, guys. The Double Cannon, one of the strongest defenses in the game, when under attack from a Rage Barbarian, is absolutely rendered useless. Rage Barbarian, no longer raged up, guys. I keep saying Rage Barbarian, I mean Barbarian King, making his way up to the Dark Elixir Collector. And it looks like the heal has just been executed in midair. So it's looking pretty cool. It looks like the Barbarian King is going to take out these, uh, these gold storages. And I don't think there's anything inside of the base to stop him. Maybe the bomb tower, but check this out, guys. The Barbarians are about to get out of range. And it looks like there's only 45 seconds left in the battle. The question is, can a single Barbarian hold out? And will Roy take first place? Now, if he had deployed all troops within 20 seconds, he would have actually won the challenge, guys. But unfortunately... It doesn't count. So let's move on to the next attacker. It is going to be Rohan. Rohan from Rohidian. Let's go ahead and check this dude out, guys. He is a lower town or level. Doesn't quite have every single troop in the game ready at his disposal. But he's still got a great army using every single troop that he has currently unlocked inside of COC. So Rage Bell goes down. Barbarian King Minion. This is what I'm talking about. Check this out, guys. Spawning troops rapidly. It looks like Rohan is going to be the first person to actually complete the challenge and spawn all troops within the 20 second period. Here we go. Balloon's about to go down. He's got a single troop. There it is. And he's done it, guys. Every single troop is down. No skeleton spells. All he's got is a rage spell, a poison, and a haste. So, Rohan, you are currently the winner and in the lead, guys. Check it out. And he lasted such a small amount of time. So, it's extremely easy to beat if someone else follows the rules. So the Knicks contended to take on the challenge Heavy Raid, once again a lower Town Hall level guys, don't worry we will get some higher Town Hall level gameplay more towards the end of the episode. Rage Spell, Heal Spell, this is what I'm talking about, this is how I would personally execute the WWE Royal Rumble guys, dropping in those spells, trying to keep as many troops alive as possible, whilst also breaking out of the actual boxing ring guys. So check it out, Bowler's gonna go down, Tesla Tower exterminated in a second. And it looks like the poison spells in the center too. I decided not to use a defending clan castle because it would have made it so much harder. And uh, I didn't really want to make it harder than it already is, guys. Don't forget, I am almost a maxed out Town Hall 11. So it really would be a great challenge if I used a CC as well. But it looks like Heavy Raid has pushed himself to his limits. A 7% total damage and it's game over. So the next attacker to take it on is going to be Kev. So let's do this, guys. Not Kev, sorry, Kushik. Let's see where he's going to be coming from. So, we have no spells going down. It appears to be dropping in the troops rather slowly, guys. And uh, he's got no heroes. So, it looks like it's going to be a quick one. Focusing in on the center, it looks like the P.E.K.K.A. And of course, oh my bad, he does have heroes. What am I talking about? He's got a Barbarian King. He just doesn't have an Archer Queen, I believe, because of his Town Hall level. But the P.E.K.K.A. is trying to break out the left wall. Barbarian trying to break out the bottom right wall. And it looks like they're both kind of at a, at a loss. Here we go. Barbarian King makes it through but gets torn apart as soon as he passes the wall region. That's kind of sad, guys. I'm not going to lie. But he's still got a skeleton spell. It's going to come down in the center. Kind of cheating there a little bit, guys. Spawning it extremely late. Check these little Larrys running for their lives. It's like they're trying to escape like Armageddon Day or something. They're just getting picked off. As soon as they come out the hole, it's like, you know when you find an ant's nest on the street and you just stamp on it every time one comes out? I don't do that, guys. I just saw it on YouTube, but it's kind of mean. Don't do that. So it looks like the next attack is about to come in from Dark Thunder and he's going to be dropping in a dual golem star, guys. Dragon, baby dragon, minion, Valkyrie, hog rider, healers are in there. Witch comes in, lava hound pouring in, barbarian king. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Great live action, bowlers in the CC, a couple of giants. And of course, a try heal spell with an archer queen. Why not, guys? Check out the glorious glow of those yellow heal spells. A balloon comes in to finish it off. And it looks like Dark Thunder has definitely followed the rules. And he could actually win this guy. So let's find out how long is he going to survive in the base. He's desperately trying to break out of this wrestling ring. 
but it doesn't appear to be going so well so far, guys. But let's find out what's going to happen. Eagle Artillery striking the troops down the bottom. Archer Queen is broken out, and it looks like Dark Thunder has definitely taken the lead. So you, my friend, are currently winning that $25 gift card. Healer is going to get exterminated, guys. Archer Queen gets taken out as well, and Dark Thunder's Thunderous Raid comes to an end. So, next attacker, Nicholas. Here we go. Is he going to follow the rules? Spawning in Giant, Balloon, Dragon, Wizard. Baby Dragon goes down. We got a Pekka. We got a Minion, Hog Rider, Valkyrie, Witch. Looks to be an awesome attack so far, guys. Only got a single healer left. Barbarian King, Queen, and of course, Skeleton Spells. But he's coming to the end of the 20 seconds. And it looks like he will not be sporting the Skeleton Spells. So, unfortunately, Nicholas... You also fail the challenge. But let's go ahead and see what kind of damage he can actually do, guys. Check it out. Two heal spells down the bottom as he tries to break out from those level 12 walls. Now, I decided to be extremely fair and set both Inferno Towers to single. I didn't want to do multi-target Inferno Towers, guys, because that would have probably destroyed 90% of most people's armies within the first 10 to 15 seconds. So Nicholas is getting kind of far, guys. He's only been on the map for about 40, 50 seconds, but it looks like the rest of the army is about to fade. He's still got that skeleton spell, so he's obviously going to be dropping it down somewhere and, of course, cheating the system, guys. So let's see where he's going to go with it. Skeleton spell has been deployed. Where is it? Can anyone see it? Where is it? Skeleton spell. Oh, it's over on the left hand side, guys. Okay. So, wait. Is that it? Yeah, that's it there. Okay. So, Nicholas, you are a little cheater. What are you cheating for? Okay. So, there we go, guys. Game over. Let's go and check out the final raid. This is Andy, and he's going to be a Tano 11. So, check this out, guys. Just like Roy a couple of attacks ago, Andy has every single troop in the game at Tano 11 unlocked, and the majority are, of course, maxed out. So, he's got to spawn every troop within 20 seconds, and he could possibly take the lead here from thunder so let's see what's gonna happen here we go all troops have been spawned just need to drop in i think it's the grand warden nope there we go it's in grand warden ability has been used and of course andy has entered into the giveaway guys so we could win 25 dollars let's see how long he's gonna survive checking out a couple of rage spells a free spell it looks to be going great so far guys andy has a huge spread on this base taking out loads of buildings on the left and the right and of course he's still got those heroes backing up and doing a serious amount of poundage at these defenses down the bottom. Single target Inferno Tower roasting those golems, guys. But of course, they are not enough to stop it. And it goes on to take out the cannon on the right-hand side as well. Grand Warden being cheeky, picking off a couple of buildings. And it looks like we have our winner. The final attack of the episode actually appears to be the winner. No, I can't say if that's 100% true. So I'm going to find out the real statistics and see who won, who came second, third, etc, etc. So if you enjoyed the video and you do want to see another one, leave a like, guys. Don't forget 10k likes and subscribe to the channel. If you want to join the clan, be on a YouTube video and attack this troll base yourself. I'll see you shortly for another episode, guys. Have a great day, great weekend. Peace out.